Hello, and welcome everyone here at Gather Versus Music Meets Metaverse. There's a thought provoking quote that I heard recently that stated the metaverse holds the promise of radically altering individual and institutional behaviors. And in this collective moment, the possibilities are staggeringly exciting and incredibly underestimated. So as an explorative type and a futurist, I'm consistently very curious about and feel enthusiastic about many of these revolutionary new tools immersive technology is giving us and how we can use them as what I like to call next level tools to create art and music and to gather in really unique and revolutionary new ways. And because of this, I want to tell our community here from my own personal perspective, how powerful, fun, and many times very unifying this can be when done right and responsibly, especially in the music and arts world. I've been really inspired by the innovation, artistry, and these technical technological advancements um, everyone's seeing to come unfold and happy to be a part of these different strong communities, um, musician and business um, communities springing up on various VR platforms and the people behind these platforms and so many of us joining in are, they're really like pioneers and it's an exciting time for sure. Um, if you're listening now, you're probably curious uh, how this all works from various insider perspectives and how you can potentially join in the future of entertainment. So. I'm here. Um, my name is Celeste, and I am an immersive experience designer, a VR event producer, music and sound director. I also have an extensive history as a California based DJ and music producer. I'm a music fanatic, uh, 15 plus years of concert, festival, nightclub, and conference production experience. I love designing and executing exciting, um, cutting edge music and entertainment related events, both physically, uh, virtually, and also in the metaverse. Um, I am also very concerned about the current state of our planet's stressed ecosystems and have a sincere drive to learn about more sustainable ways and methods uh, and different te tech that can potentially help humanity become more efficient and effective in being better stewards uh, to this beautiful planet that we live on. Um, so a bit of recent history, my most recent event series was called Act Now VR, where my team at Dreamland XR and Boutique Electronic Music teamed up with the United Nations to help design and produce multiple large scale VR events, where we had thousands of avatar attendees from around the world using the Alt Space VR app. Um, to come in and get educated and um, we we wanted to get the public inspired to learn about the United Nations Act Now campaign for the sustainable development goals and take personal action. So the Act Now VR experience is really a terrific example of not just larger scale event production in the metaverse, but also community building, educational, virtual activism, um, teaming up with a major organization and some applicable context of how metaverse events can and are changing the way we get together, exchange information, relate, express ourselves and gather. So Act Now VR was a cool example of a digital twin experience where our phenomenally talented artists designed 3D models of existing UN and UNESCO related physical landmarks. Specifically, the first one we did was the Al Wassel Dome at World Expo in Dubai, where Coldplay has recently performed a concert. Um, we had our team insert them into Altspace VR as a free educational interactive space that people could portal into. Uh, we had trained assistants for orientation and then um, the participants can wander around this unique scaled world listening to broadcast music, um, different panel discussions and read educational plaques and, and different content that we put in there for them. I do think we're going to be seeing more digital twin uh, for concerts and performances as they really do offer exciting experiences for visitors and fans. Uh, the use of AR and VR is on the rise also in large event venues, um, especially with the rollout of 5G and event stadiums. Um, so I think we're, we're going to be delving a little bit more into digital twins as we progress today and something I think that 
everyone should really be starting to think about. And, and something that makes the metaverse and events really special is gamification of events. So there's ways we can make the metaverse more fun, inviting, unifying, and participatory um, using gamification. And there's already some event production teams that are currently coming up with unique ways to get people involved, um, ways participants can get incentivized by chances to win money, to make them feel like they're in a race, a game show, a red carpet event area with photographers, escape room, or some kind of contest. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the metaverse offers kind of sky is the limit possibilities that can be incorporated into music related events and things that really um, make it cutting edge and unique and increase and expand attendance and um, ways to make money. So here, what you're looking at is a video sample of one of the corporate events that my team at Boutique Electronic Music produced. It's an immersive VR experience for recently as an interactive game, gamified private corporate event um, that company members could attend in VR the night of the party, or they could also participate by watching a simultaneous um, Zoom party that we broadcast um, a, a uh, a video out courtesy of our pro VR videographers that were flying around um, capturing everything inside the VR world. I initially interviewed the client as to what kind of world they wanted, and they told me that the product they were launching was a Mario Kart theme um, named Lakitu. So this was the inspiration be behind the pitch that we originally did, and then we got the contract and um, created this unique metaverse event um, with all the visuals and some of the video games and video game aspects. Um, so attendees could portal into this exciting fun racetrack, wear their own Mario Kart clothing and a cart that they could actually get their avatar to sit in and they could race each other around the course. Um, and we also had a dance floor area um, with you know a broadcast of, of me doing my DJ set um, we incorporated the corporation's logos in there into the racetrack and uh, we put the company founders pictures along the racetrack um, just gently made it more personalized and fun. And um, I worked with a team of seven people for this event, including three uh, two 3D world builders, um, three in world videographers, a VJ and a video editor. We did this entire production in two weeks. So our teams can move pretty fast if they need to hustle. Um, something else we're gonna dive in on is uh, concerts in the metaverse. So although it will be a little bit more time before the metaverse is integrated into our everyday lives, of course, we're already seeing many new creative cases um, after gaming, some exciting concerts are now taking place in the metaverse. Prominent artists like Post Malone, um, who is actually performing this week on the 15th inside of Meta's Horizon. So that's pretty experimental and new. There's also big names by Ariana Grande, Travis Scott, Scott, and Marshmallow, of course. They teamed up with Fortnite um, and they put on these um, unprecedented global scale and they made a lot of money doing it. So I know a lot of people are kind of curious how monetization is gonna come in here um, and ways that we can all make some money for ourselves. Um, some other VR platforms for concerts include Altspace VR, Sansar, Tribe XR, which is more for DJs, VR Chat, Roblox, VR Jam, Neos Horizon, uh, Second Life is still is kind of old school, but it's still active. And then we have um, Rec Room. And here to talk a little bit more about concerts and digital twin type festivals and nightclub experience is Ollie Rankin. So let me introduce him. All right, hi everyone. Now I am here with virtual reality and visual effects pioneer, award-winning director, multidisciplinary artist, futurist, and activist. Ollie Rankin, um, who is a creative director at VR Jam, which is a platform for virtual concerts and immersive content creation. He's also a co-founder and technical director with Lost Horizon, which is a hybrid venue with an exact digital twin capable of replicating performances into VR in real time. So welcome, Ollie, and a friend of mine for hey. a couple, yeah, a couple years now from the metaverse and beyond. Great to be here, Celeste. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. Of course, thank you. Um, I really respect your leadership in the field and your tenacity 
um, working with these um, very new cutting edge programs and platforms. And um, I just want to start by um, asking you a few questions. The first one is how long have you worked at VR Jam and what is your role there? Yeah, so um, I joined VR Jam way back in 2017. Um, a, a friend of mine introduced me to um, Sam Spate, the founder and CEO, and um, we we sort of we connected over the fact that you know I shared. Um, a, a fascination with virtual reality. I'd already been working in virtual reality for a few years by that point, um, but I had this background in visual effects and, and digital um, sort of CG content creation, which um, was an area that, that VR Jam didn't have in their sort of toolbox. They, they specialized in um, motion capture um, and sort of delivering live motion captured performances into VR, but um, they needed somebody with my background in um, in the creative fields to be able to sort of come in and help um, make sure that everything looked as cool as it possibly could. Nice. So um, for anyone also new, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what is Lost Horizon and what is your role as a founder and director with them? Yeah, so when the pandemic hit, um, you know, we'd been working with VR Jam for a few years trying to convince people that um, putting virtual events on was, was going to be an important thing, that, that making events more accessible and inclusive, that reducing the carbon footprint of large scale live events were all good reasons to, to do them virtually. Um, but and, and in fact, what we were doing was, you know, we were doing hybrid events. So we would have DJs playing, say, in the Ministry of Sound nightclub in London. And wow. then <laughs> that DJ would be wearing a motion capture suit and their movements would be streamed live into VR along with their music. Um, and we, we'd sort of been struggling for years to convince people that there was a business reason to do this because you know people obviously want to um to be able to make a profit out of everything um but as soon as the pandemic hit suddenly people the, the you know the light bulb went on and, wow. and people realized okay there there is a this is a reason for doing events in vr um and so our team at vr jam you know we had been we'd been working on our own um sort of proto platform, but we had also been evaluating some of the other social VR platforms that were out there. Um, and so when the pandemic hit and the Glastonbury Music Festival got cancelled in 2020, we got partnered up with the people that, um, that run the Shangri-La field at Glastonbury. Um, and together with Sanzar, we put on the, the first ever Lost Horizon Festival, which yeah. it took place in over the July 4th weekend in 2020. Um, I think we had like a thousand people in VR, ten thousand people on the on the PC um, gaming platform, and something like four and a half million people tuned in to stream views. We had, you know, an amazing roster of headliners like Fatboy Slim and Carl Cox and Seth Troxler, and, and you yeah. know, just a, a who's who of um, of amazing DJs and, and bands. I saw videos, um, but I was not there. But and I'm also a fan of Sansar. How how easy was it to work with the Sansar um, reps and and producers to to join forces to make this happen? Yeah, I mean the the team at Sansar were were great to work with. We were all sort of ideologically on the same page. You know, a big part of what um, what Shangri La is at Glastonbury is, you know, it's not just about music. It's about um, art and yes. culture and sort of, you know, subversive, anti-capitalist, um, progressive culture. So, um, you know, <laughs> we were we were all on the same page. The, the Sanzar team that we worked with were all sort of aligned with that. And um, so we were able to, you know, we were able to create um, a, a very a very similar feel to the environments um and you know 
the one of the one of the things that's really fun about Sansar is that um, they have this what they call a party in a box, and it's like this sort of special effects um, toolkit where you can have you know lasers and bubbles and yeah, smoke. I've and... seen it; it's great. It's really fun. It's fun for um, also breaking the ice with other people. Some of the interactive games. Totally, totally. Um, yeah. So we we had a we had a very successful um, sort of creative partnership between the three companies and um, yeah. Um, I'm also curious because I'm talking a bit to our viewers today about um, these hybrid digital twin experiences, which um, I've been a part of as a producer and designer. And I'm just curious um, your thoughts on their current and future roles in the entertainment and music world. Yeah, so I, you know, I still very much believe in those sort of initial things that that drew me to to working with VRGEM about making events more accessible and inclusive and, and reducing the carbon footprint. So, you know, as the um, pandemic restrictions were phasing out, um, it was clear to me that I still wanted to make sure that, you know, um, all these sort of VR options for attending events didn't disappear. Um, and and it, so of course, it made sense to, to do the sort of hybrid model. Um, the Lost Horizon team, meanwhile, you know, most of our team is based in um, Bristol in the United Kingdom. Yes. And um, as the pandemic was sort of petering out, um, we went looking for some office space in Bristol and it turned out that the best office space available also happened to be a big warehouse. Um, so we turned it into a, a live music venue. Um, and so we've spent the last um, year working through different ways of hosting hybrid events. So we, you know, we, um, we streamed a lot of stuff live from the venue onto Twitch. Um, but we've also built a digital twin of the venue that exists in Sansar. Um, it's also in a format that can be portable to exist in alt space, VR okay. or VR yeah. chat. So it was built in <coughs> Unity or Blender? Just curious for our viewers. Um, it was built so the, the actual 3D authoring was done in um, Cinema 4D okay. and then it was brought into Unity and because most of the social VR platforms are built in based on Unity, um, so VR chat, um, alt space VR, rec room, um, and also the, the proprietary platform that our team at Lost Horizon is now building as well. Um, which, um, yeah, all, all built on Unity. So if you've got your assets into Unity, then it, they're sort of, they're portable into each of these different um, sort of slices of the metaverse. Okay, great. And um, now I know the pandemic is over and probably the attendee ship has potentially go gone down, but how has the um, participation levels been for the VR performances of these, um, the digital twin, the live experience that is, are happening at this warehouse? Yeah, so, so far we haven't um, done any ticketed events um, with, in, in VR and we, are, we haven't actually released um our our client platform yet so um so so far we we don't have any sort of numbers um but our general feeling is that you know people the the large bulk of people are so hungry to to get out into real um in-person events um that we're not yet seeing a lot of people wanting to uh, attend in vr um but i think you know when we have, um, as we did with the original Lost Horizon Festival in 2020, when we have these sort of tentpole um, headliners, you know, that obviously will cause people who are on the other side of the world to, to be more open to consider attending in VR. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that that's what we've, what we've really discovered is you need to give people a reason to, to don the VR headset yeah. or... Um, um, okay, Ali, so thank you so much for um, interviewing with me. And again, for anyone that just came in, so Ali Rankin is a virtual reality and visual effects pioneer, an award-winning director, multidisciplinary artist, futurist, and activist. And he currently is a director at VR Jam and a co-founder and technical director with Lost Horizon. So Ali, thank you again for coming in and telling us a little bit about your insight into what's going on in this fascinating industry right now. My pleasure, Celeste. Thank you for having me.
Okay, cheers.